Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and today I'm continuing my level 1 series on creating basic decks for new players in Hearthstone. And these decks involve cards that are only available to you right after finishing the tutorial, which means every single player has access to every single one of these cards. All you have to do is unlock the class you want to play first, and then you'll be able to make these decks from what you have available for you uh, from the basic set. So today's class is Priest, which is one of my favorite classes because of its hero power and the spells that are available to Priest. Uh, the Priest Hero Power, for two mana, allows you to heal any target on the field for two hit points, which can be very powerful, especially if you get into the late game, uh, because you'll have a lot of strong minions that will kill a dude, but still stick around on the field, which then allows you to heal them and keep them around even longer. As such, Priest decks are normally centered towards the control side of things, though they can be played a little bit more early game or mid game board control. So before we get into the specific details about each card in the deck, I just want to point out that the basic Priest cards that you have available to you right at the start, most of them are very powerful, and these are cards that are going to take you into even higher level games. You will see some of these cards in pro games even. So Priests got really lucky when it comes to starting cards, because except for Mind Blast, they are very solid. So we're talking about Holy Smite, Power Word Shield, North Shadow Cleric, and Shadow Word Pain. All four of those, I included both of those, uh, both of each card in the deck. So the first card that I've included in the deck is Holy Smite. This card for one mana allows you to deal two damage to any target on the field, but I only recommend you use it on creatures unless you're going for lethal damage this turn. Uh, the reason for that is you want to control the board, especially as a priest. Don't let them have more minions than you. It's pretty basic. Hearthstone is in general a board control game. Although you can play rush decks, you won't really have the cards for a rush deck, and Priest is also a class that just doesn't do rushing well. So save Holy Smite in order to destroy a minion which could be devastating to you, such as a, a Knife Juggler, which is a 3-2 two for 2, that every time a minion gets summoned, it sends a random 1 damage knife at a random enemy target. Um, that thing needs to go immediately, so save Holy Smite for things like that. Next up, we have Power Word Shield. This is a fantastic card, you will see it in every single Priest deck. It, for one mana, gives two permanent health, this includes maximum health, so it's not a heal, it's a buff, to any target on the field, any minion, of course. And then on the back of that, it allows you to draw a card. But this combo is very well with Priest uh, Hero Power, and also North Shadow Cleric, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's just so much power for one mana, and then it allows you to draw a card on the back of it. It's just too much value, you definitely want it in your deck. There is no Priest deck I can think of where you do not want Power Ward Shield. Put it in. Next up, we have Elven Archer, which is a relatively average card, but it is one of the better uh, one-drops that you get from the basic set. So what makes this relatively decent is that it has a one-damage battle cry. You can use the Elven Archer to snipe any minion on the battlefield that has a Divine Shield or one, ma uh, one health left, and that can be quite a good effect. If they have something that has 6 or 7 attack, but over the course of the turn still has 1 HP left, and you have no other way to get rid of it, Elven Archer can save your ass in that circumstance. So it's not bad for a 1-drop, but generally you don't want to play it on turn 1 unless your opponent has something else on the field. Similar to Holy Smite, you don't want to use direct damage on the opponent, you want to use it on minions. Next up we have Northshire Cleric. This is a great card that is often kind of misplayed. If you play it on turn 1 and you're going first, more than likely what your opponent is going to do, if they're any good at all, is to play a 3-2 for 2 mana, meaning it has 3 attack, which will immediately trade into your Northshire Cleric, and then its heal draw card effect is wasted. What makes this card good, as I just mentioned, is that whenever a minion gets healed, you as the player get to draw a card for free. You can potentially get 3, 4, or 5 cards off of this thing, so you don't want to be losing them so easily. In general, a better way to play North Shire Cleric is to wait until you have minions on the field which are already wounded. Then you can play North Shire Cleric and heal to immediately draw a card without even having the opportunity for your opponent to destroy your North Shire Cleric before its effect gets to activate. If you do have to play it on turn 1, though, it does have okay stats. It's a 1 attack, 3 health. It would be much better if it had two attack, but that would be just completely overpowered, like Zombie Chow. Which is a card you get from Naxxramas, not in the basic set, for another time. 
Voodoo Doctor is a card that has one mana. Um, the other minion I put in the deck. Arguably, there's maybe a few too many one-drops, but that's not so bad, because with Norshire Cleric, you can draw a lot more cards, and you won't really have to worry about that too much if you play the North Shire Cleric, right? Anyway, what this card does is it heals any target for 2 HP. And why I put this in here is obviously it combos with the North Shire Cleric. You play your North Shire Cleric, then you play a Voodoo Doctor, which means you get to play a minion for 1 mana and heal a dude for 2 HP, drawing a card on the back of it, and with that you can probably establish a very strong board presence. So having Voodoo Doctor and North Shire Cleric in the same hand can be quite nice. Next up we have Shadow Ward Pain, another fantastic priest card that is seen in many decks, although some of the higher end ones only run one of them. What it does is it destroys any minion with less than three attack, three or less attack. And this has many good targets, including something like a Senjin Shield Master, or if your opponent happens to be running the basic Gurabashi Berserker, which costs five mana, but it only starts with two attacks, so you can Shadow Ward Pain it before it's, um, whenever it takes damage, it gains three attack effect. You can destroy it before that happens, uh, which is very nice. Other targets could include something like a Gnomish Inventor, uh, a card that costs four but only has two attack, or an Oasis Snapjaw, which has two attack, seven HP, you get to destroy it. Generally, it'll be used as removal for probably two or three cost minions, but it's still very good, because anything you don't like on the field or anything that needs to go away because it has some kind of devastating effect, you can destroy it before it has the chance to ruin you, and it's just very good to have removal on your hands, so I put two of them in there. Next up, we have Acidic Swamp Ooze, another card that I've been including in all of these basic decks because it is that good. What makes it so fantastic is not necessarily its three attack, two health stats, which are strictly average, but rather it destroys your opponent's weapon if they have one. And there are four classes that have weapons, and each of them will be devastated if you end up playing this against one of their weapons. Those four classes are Shaman, Warrior, Rogue, and... Uh, Summon Warrior, Rogue, and... Paladin. Oh, of course, Paladin. <laughs> um, you may want to hold on to this, unless you have no other plays on turn two. If you're up against one of those four classes, which again are Rogue, Paladin, Warrior, and Shaman. Um, simply because your opponent might hold on to a weapon until they until they see you have you've played your acidic swamp boost, or until they're forced to play their weapon because they have to respond to what's on your field. In other words, they might be hiding their weapon from you. Um, if you do play it on turn two, it's still solid as a three two drop, but if you can hold it on until they play a really huge weapon, something like a gore howl, a um, true silver champion, which you'll see almost every paladin run, or a doom hammer from a shaman. This card will absolutely devastate them. So having one of them in your hand at all times when you're up against those classes until you really have to play it just as a regular minion is great and you will be able to devastate your opponents like that. Next up is Bloodfin Raptor. Uh, this card is strictly worse than the Acidic Swamp Ooze simply because it has no effect. All it has is the same stats as the Ascetic Swamp Ooze, 3 attack, 2 health, but there's not too many good choices from the 2 drop basic set, so this is about as good as it gets. Um, what, why this card is made to be weaker is because it has beast synergy with hunters. A hunter can play a Hound Master onto it to give it 2 extra attack, 2 extra health, and taunt, strictly because it's a beast. Uh, Murlocs have the same kind of thing where they're not so great alone, but when you have Murloc Synergy, they can be quite effective. Oh, but please don't play a Murloc deck unless you have at least a Murloc War Leader or most of the other war, uh, Murloc cards that you have to get from packs, uh, because the basic Murloc cards are just very weak on their own. Anyway, moving on. Next up we have Razorfin Hunter. It is a 3-drop that gives you 3 health and... Uh, th 3 attack and 4 health worth of sats over the course of 2 minions. It does this by summoning a 1-1 boar alongside it. Stats wise, this is quite good. Um, that makes 7 stats for 3 mana. The downside is um, one of those minions is just very weak and likely to get removed immediately. 
But in terms of stats, uh, this isn't too bad. It has the potential to, you know, two for one. Like, you can run the 1-1-4 one, one, into something, and you can also run the 2-3 Razorfin Hunter into something. But that's a best-case scenario. It's not a bad card, but it does set up a little bit for the next card, which is a Shattered Sun Cleric, allowing you to give a friendly minion plus one health and plus one attack. And this combos with the previous card because you can pick and choose which kind of minion you want to make a little bit stronger. And you make them stronger so that they can trade better into your opponents, killing something that they otherwise couldn't have, or killing something that they could have, but also survive it. And surviving things is very, 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 very critical for priests. Because the priest hero power, for two mana, allows you to heal it, and bring it back up to full or at least a reasonable health state. That's what you want to do as a priest. You want to kill your opponent's minions without losing your own, so that you can follow it up with your hero power. In any circumstance where you get to heal a minion two hit points, uh, as priest, is just... <laughs> I would say, in those circumstances, the best hero power in the game. Well, arguably up against the Warlock deck, but you want to abuse that hero power as much as you can, and you want to be using it on your minions. So, using Shattered Sun Cleric, you buff your minions up, you run them into your other opponents, and then you heal your minions back up after they survive combat. Next up, we have Cho Wind Yeti. Uh, I've stated before in previous videos, and many other people who do Hearthstone videos have mentioned as well, that the Cho Wind Yeti is basically the staple value card. It has nine stats and a very good distribution for four mana. Any card that has slightly less attack than it does health is more than likely to get two minions for one, but in the case of Priest, I would say it's pretty likely you can even get three minions for one as long as you heal it up. And that's just where Priest is strong. Controlling the board, destroying your opponent's minions without losing your own, and then being incredibly annoying when you heal them back up and your opponent just can never kill your dudes. So having two of them in there is pretty strong. Next up we have a Gnomish Inventor. Aside from the Northshire Cleric, this deck had, up to this point has not really had any extra card draw. And the stats on Gnomish Inventor are actually pretty good. Some relatively higher-end decks do actually run Gnomish Inventor. Um, it has that kind of Yeti stat distribution, where it has less attack than it does HP. Meaning, this card might be able to kill two weaker minions off, but even if it only kills one guy, or half of a guy, you still have an extra card on the back of it. So. This card will kind of keep you going into the later games, make sure you still have extra cards in your hand, and it's just overall a pretty good board drop to have. Next up, we have Sinjin Shieldmaster. This card is similar to the Chillwind Yeti, in that it gets that kind of two-for-one value where you run it into minions that have um, weaker minions. And then the weaker minion dies, but your dude doesn't, because it has that five health. And having five health on a minion is a pretty good number, especially for four drops. But what makes this different than the Chowind Yeti is it has one less attack in exchange for Taunt. Um, the reason for having this in there is two reasons. One, it protects your other guys, such as the Northshire Cleric, which is critical to keep alive. And secondly, it protects your face. A lot of other decks may try to go for your face as Priest, because Priest is a slower class to play. So having this guy up there as a taunt will be great. You will really enjoy having his protection, and it can save your butt. Next up we have Darkscale Healer, a card I love to combo with the Chillwind Yeti, the Sentient Shieldmaster. But in the case of Priest, also the Northshire Cleric. Uh, this card heals all friendly characters up, and this includes your hero, by two hit points when it's played. Aside from that, it's a Yeti stat, uh, stat distribution of four attack, five health for five mana. I consider this card to be pretty good. Um, not a lot of professional decks run it, just because there's better cards out there, but in the case of basic priest cards, I consider this very, very strong, actually. Um, if you have two wounded minions on the board, and then you play a dark scale healer on the back of that, that is incredible value. Um, this will keep your board very sturdy, and bring you into the later game, where your opponents will just not be able to get through your minions and then they'll be out of minions, and that's when you win. So it's a great card to have. Um, just typically, it's best played when you already have something else on the field. Next up, we have Bold of Fist Ogre, another very, very strong basic card. It has 6 attack and 7 health for 6 mana. 
It is similar to the Chill Wind Yeti and it has slightly less attack than it does health. Though its stats are too high on each of them, so this guy can take out bigger things. Whereas something like a Chill Wind Yeti might be going for two or three drop minions, this thing can take out four or five drop minions, so it's a very powerful turn six play. And it's great with priests because it has so much HP that it's likely to survive, which means you can heal it up, and if your opponent has to trade anything else into it, that thing that trades into it is still going to be taking six damage. This thing is almost guaranteed to get two or three minions for one. Lastly, we have a single Stormwind Champion. Uh, because this isn't such a rush deck, I only included one of them in here, but it's still a great basic card in just about any uh, deck that uses basic cards. So, Stormwind Champion, it is a 6-6 six, six for 7 mana, which on its own is mediocre stats, but what makes it strong is that when it's played, and when it's on the field, all of your friendly minions have plus 1 health and plus 1 attack. If you have 3 minions on the field, or even 2, and then you play this on top of them, uh, this will give your field great additional value, and your minions will be able to survive trades, which combos well with the hero power, allowing you to heal them back up. And it can be a strong finisher. If your opponent hasn't dealt with your board by the time you play a Stormwind Champion, it's quite likely that playing the Stormwind Champion will kind of seal the deal. Uh, so there you go, that's a look at the, the basic Priest deck. Um, just remember that you want to be using your hero power on your minions. I wouldn't say necessarily as much as possible, but as much as you can afford to. Just make sure you don't die as the Priest, because a lot of decks will go for your face, knowing that they can't beat you in the later game. But uh, be very efficient with your trades. Try not to lose your minions when you're running into them, uh, running into your opponent's minions, and you should be good to go. Um, the basic priest cards are very strong, and I, I think this is one of the stronger decks I've made for this tutorial series, so I would definitely give priest a, a, a try. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments or want to see something else, uh, let me know down below. And if you'd like to see the other videos, I'm going to be coming out with a couple more and then doing an update video on the level 10 versions of all of these decks, which will, I'll just include all nine classes in one video because I'm only going to be briefly explaining the minor changes. But if you'd like to see all that, go ahead and subscribe, and thank you all very much for watching. Have a good one. Have a good one. Have a good one.